Hi there! Welcome to another Friday Findings video. Today I thought I would give you another tool to add to your jewelry making toolkit and that is the surprisingly simple art of kumihimo braiding. Well it's simple in some ways but as you can see in these examples it has a very complex look. This is a basic kumihimo braid. I just did this with some simple crochet cotton the, other, the rest of these here are done with beads, which is a little bit more complex. Today I'm going to show you how to do the basic kumihimo braid, and another day I will show you how to add beads, because that's where it gets really fun, as you can see. Now kumihimo braiding is done on a disc, and here you can see how it's spelled. Kumihimo is a very ancient Japanese art of braiding. Samurais used kumihimo cords as part of their uniforms, and even today a kumihimo cord is used to hold an obi in a kimono. Thankfully, we have access to some very simple tools that make this process quite easy for us today. Now you can make your own disc. This is just a thick foam disc with 32 slots in it, but they're not very expensive and it's great to just buy one of these for yourself. And you can use up to 32 cords to make a braid, but the most common one you'll see for crafters today uses 8 cords. And you can use just about anything you want to braid with. You saw I used crochet cotton, you can use ribbon, you could use strands of beads, you could use, like I have here, yarn, you could combine them and use yarn and ribbon and strands of beads and, and crochet cotton all in one cord, you would get a very interesting texture by using the different ones. But what I have here are four lengths of yarn, and I'm going to double them so I'll have my eight strands. Now when you're making a kumihimo cord, uh, if you need a cord that's a certain length, you'll need to cut yourself about three times as much cording as you want length of, of finished braid. So I've just gone ahead and met the ends of all four pieces of my yarn and folded it in half. And I'm just going to take a piece of thread and tie them together at the halfway point. And you can cut this away later. This just keeps everything even. And then I'm going to tuck that thread and the center points of my yarns down through that hole and I'm just going to hold it with one hand on the back side here. And you can see this disc has four large dots, and that helps orient us. And I'm going to just put two strands on either side of each dot. And you just pull them back and tuck them in. And I'm holding this so that it doesn't get pulled off center. So if you want a particular pattern with your yarns, there are charts out there that will show you how to set them up on your disc. For example, this little one that I showed you, I had uh, four of pink and four of white, and I had pink and pink and white and white, and that gave me this very even spiraling all around. Now we have all of these yarns dangling down from our cord, and I can guarantee you they will get tangled. So what you need to keep them from getting tangled and again, you can try to fashion your own, but these aren't that expensive and they're so useful, are these little bobbins, and they just turn inside out. You'll especially want these if you're using beads, which, like I said, I will show you on the next video. But for now, you just wrap your yarn on your bobbin and get it pretty close to your disc, because we don't want them to tangle, and then repeat. You can buy packages of eight bobbins, and they do come in different sizes, so if you're making a really long cord, uh, you may want to get the larger ones. And if you're using beads, you want, most likely, the larger bobbins. And so you just add each of your strands of yarn to a bobbin. And so there we have all of the bobbins attached, and they'll just dangle down, and now your cord won't get tangled. So now we can start braiding. It's a very simple procedure. We're just going to grab the one that's on the bottom left, pop it out of its slot, and bring it up to the top left. And now there's three at the top, so we need to have two back down the bottom. And the one that's on the top right goes down to the bottom. And the one that was on the left stays on the left, and the one that was on the right stays on the right. 
and we're going to give our disc a quarter turn counterclockwise. It really doesn't matter which way you turn it as long as you do it consistently every time, and it will matter as far as the direction your spiral goes in. So then we repeat. Left, up, down, right quarter turn, and I like to switch hands, so I move the left one with my left hand, and then hold it with my left, and move the right one with my right hand. Down, right, quarter turn, left, up, down, right, quarter turn. And if you need to remember that, if you just remember that if the seat is left up, it's downright unpleasant. <laughs> You're welcome for that picture that paints. Uh, that will help you remember your pattern. Left, up, down, right, and turn. Left, up, down, right. And that's all there is to it. It's a very simple process. And whenever you need to, you can just grab your bobbin and give it a tug and feed out a little bit more yarn. And if you find you have to walk away, Make sure that you take your left one and put it up, but don't pull the right one down. And that way you'll know when you come back right where to start again would be with this one on the right. Now the first time you, that you try kumihimo, if you've seen beaded kumihimo, I can guarantee you want to do that. But do a few cords with just plain yarn or ribbon, or actually rat tail cord is very popular to use in kumihimo braiding because it has a nice shiny finish and it's smooth and easy to use and inexpensive. So start with just some plain cords, make a couple of those until you really have the hang of it because adding beads, while well, adding a lot of beauty, does add a bit of complexity. So you just keep braiding until one of your threads is too short to fit into the next slot. It's important that all of your threads fit into the slots to keep even tension as you're braiding so that your braid comes out nice and even. So once one of your cords is too short, then you can just pull off the remainder of your bobbins. And you can see as we've been braiding, the cord has just been fading out the bottom. And when you have enough length, you can see the spiraling pattern. Because I used chenille yarns for the most part, I have a quite heavily textured cord. So we just pull off our bobbins and then pop the cords out of the slots of the disc. And here we have it. Now you'll notice this is kind of stiff. And what you can do is start at the end where it started and just kind of run your hand down it. And this loosens it up a great deal. It stretches it a little, it's a little thinner, but it's much looser and much more flexible and graceful for using in jewelry. And then to finish your end, uh, for this one, it's so thick, I'll probably just use some more of this thread and wrap it around and knot it. But you could just gather all of your threads and tie them in an overhand knot as well. And that is how you make kumihimo cord. So grab yourself a disc and some bobbins and some fibers and have fun. Experiment with different combinations and I think you'll really enjoy the results. Thanks so much for watching Keepsake Crafts videos. If you like this video, please be sure you've subscribed to my YouTube channel so you'll see more like it. And also check out the two jewelry making videos up on the screen. Happy creating. Bye-bye.